Hey, John, what are you doing? Hey, Amy, look, I just uh, I just finished the banner for, for Caroline, you know, for the, for the yeah. Senate. Yeah. Um, I have some bad news. You might want to oh. reprint. Oh. Okay. Um, yeah. We'll what? Just, I'll just take it. What? What? I'll just take oh. it. Okay. Welcome to Hotline TV. I'm Amy Walter. And I'm John Mercurio with Caroline Kennedy out of the New York Senate race. New York Governor David Patterson has now left with a slightly smaller list to choose from in replacing Hillary Clinton in the Senate seat. All right. Who are the big names, Amy Walter, that we're hearing about? Let's go through the pros and the cons of each of these, of sort of the top three candidates people are talking about. All right, Go. so let's mention the top three first sure. off the bat. Andrew Cuomo, That's State Attorney, Attorney General, General, Kristen Gillibrand, new, uh, newly freshman, elected, no, she's now term, a sophomore, yes. Second term upstate congresswoman. And we can talk a little bit about Carol Maloney, who's definitely been lobbying for herself she for would quite be, some time. She would be a second tier candidate, but... Uh, east um, Side, New York, East Upper East Side, New York, the New York City Stockton Congress. District. Go yes. ahead. All right, she's so blue All right, so Cuomo. His list of pros much longer, obviously, than his list of cons. Huge name ID, upstate credentials, can raise a ton of money, has $5 million that he's raised so far for his AG race. He's politically and media savvy. Statewide. And he has, uh, and he has a statewide experience. experience, so that even if things start to go south in the Senate, right, people aren't really happy with what's going on in Congress, he can also position himself as a New York legislator more than just a Washington sure. insider. He's also somebody who, you know, a lot of people talk about how this seat has always been filled by giants, which really shouldn't mean anything, but it seems to in, it in this case. Yeah. You know, Dave, uh, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, Robert F. Kennedy, uh, and, and Hillary, Hillary Rodham Clinton, Clinton, Hillary Rodham Clinton, another name sure. uh, we're all familiar with. And, 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 and I think that Cuomo, to some extent, at least as far as New York politics is concerned, would fall into that category. He certainly is part of a name. Uh, he's sort of, a, uh, sort of a part of a political dynasty. All right, so the cons being that Look, he's part of a political dynasty. The, is that his con? The con probably being that he's part of a political dynasty, but he's just like Hillary Clinton, part of a political dynasty that I think has then gone on to earn his own uh, reputation, has his own record to run on. I think that was the rep against Caroline Kennedy. Right. Okay. Um, so I really don't see many negatives that I don't the either. dynasty being the, the big I, one. And I don't either. And especially the way this process has worked its way through. This is not a coronation when you have people go through tryouts and re-interviews. Mm -hmm. It's not as if this thing has sort of gotten played both privately and publicly. So, okay. Number Second, two. Uh, Two-term Congressman Kristen Gillibrand. I, I guess the pros would be uh, symbolically a lot of people supporting the idea that a woman should fill right. this seat. Hillary Clinton, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, being the, her predecessor. Being a woman. Being a woman. That's a very good point. Um, and, and I think that is important. You know, you're, you're looking, obviously, David Patterson running for actually election for the first time as governor. Um, and I think obviously needs to draw heavily upon female voters. So that's something that he's looking at. Um, she's also considered, I think, sort of a, a, a giant killer. She, she came into Congress uh, beating a Republican congressman. Um, and she in a is tough district. in a tough district, and she's considered somebody who can raise money. Although she'll, she's never had to raise the thirty to thirty-five million dollars that she'd have to raise for right. this race. Right. And the cons being, besides the fact that she's only been in Congress for two years, so there's, there's that piece. That's the most obvious. But again, it seems to me that you want somebody who's going to be a little more well-rounded in terms of their political portfolio and profile. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if her, if her case to make to New Yorkers wh why they should re-elect her is based solely on the fact that she has served two terms in the House and a few months in the Senate, that doesn't seem as compelling to me as something that other candidates can point and to. And the con being also that, and this falls to Carolyn Maloney also, is that she'll be running, like, like we've mentioned, you've mentioned before, who knows what the, the reputation of Democrats in Congress is going to be in November of 2010. Right. Uh, and and if she'll, they'll have been part of it for longer than Cuomo will Especially have Maloney, he's, especially right. Maloney, who's been in Congress for more than a decade. So this is something I think that they all have to be taken into consideration. Their own pu sort of public approval rating is a little bit out of their control. Right. Okay. So there we go. That Carolyn Maloney. Good. All right. Now, there we've, got her. There were, we've moved through that. Now we got to move to the, our next issue, which yes. is, I don't know if you've noticed this. Actually, you have. Because you did, did bring this up. Every appointed senator thus far has it's been a big surprise. Ted Kaufman. Who oh, knew? Michael Bennett. Whoop. And then, of course, our own Roland, Roland Burris. Burris. Indeed. All right. So maybe Patterson's prize is all picks a surprise. Sure. Who I mean, would look, it be? Right. We can Who wake up tomorrow, been? and then the choice could be somebody like 
Bill Clinton. Mm -hmm. Look, he's already been vetted, he right? Has indeed. That's perfect. He's got all his financials out there. He would have, have to, to disclose worry about that. all the thorn donors to uh, to his foundation. Uh, look, exactly. he's already said absolutely not. But we don't know what sort of private conversations are going on behind closed doors. He obviously has a lot of support in New York uh, and across the country, and could be an, a good partner, I think, uh, for the Secretary of State. How about Michael Bloomberg? Interesting choice Rich. as well. Bipartisan, tripartisan, tripartisan, if you will. He can do no, you know. He think, can he can bridge the gap. I think one supporter he would have in that race would be Anthony Weiner. Oh, we'd love that. Glide past the New York mayor's race. And I'm going to put this one last name mm. out there, and it is a real long shot. Who but is if it? I'm Who right, is it? Oh, I'm going to be so famous. Elliot Spitzer. Look, compared to Rod Blagojevich, at this point, Elliot oh, Spitzer looks like a looks, looks, looks like, like a, a choir like a boy. Choir boy. Thank so you very true. much. Um, and so this would be, I think, you know, everybody needs a second chance in mm -hmm. politics. Mm -hmm. Patterson and Spitzer worked really well together uh, when Spitzer was governor. This could be the redemption that Spitzer needs. Okay. You heard it here first, everybody. You did hear it here first. All right. But that's unfortunately all the time we have for today. Until next time, I'm John Mercurio. And I'm Amy Walter. See you again on Hotline TV.